You know who that includes? That includes every last one of us here tonight. Amen. I'm a whosoever. If you're a who, you're a whosoever. Now, if you're not a who, if you're an it, then it doesn't matter. But if you're not an it, you're a person. I created in the image of God, who God breathed into you a soul, and you became a living soul, and you had the breath of life in you. And if you've got the breath of life in you, God can make you a whosoever. One thing God does not command, though, he wants this to be on our own uh, initiative. He wants us to love him because we want to love him. He wants us to accept him because we want to accept him. God's not in the business of building robots. If God could take Brother Travis there and grab him by the neck and say, you're going to get saved whether I want you to or not, he would get no glory out of that, no would he? Because we know God is all powerful. We know he's almighty. We know he can do anything he wants to do. But I tell you, he would get no glory out of the fact that he grabbed Travis by the neck and said, you're going to get saved, you hear me? But I'm telling you what. When you find out that Travis says, Lord, I serve you because I love you, then he gets glory. If he tells anybody uh, you get, that, that, that we serve him because we want to, he gets glory. God's not in the robot making business. God is in the, in the business of inviting people to the Savior that they can be saved and they can be, and serve him and love him because they want to. The greatest prospect is that is the whosoever is not just men, it's not just women. Thank God it's children. And it's not necessarily a certain age being young or a certain age being old. It's the whosoever. And I'm glad I found that out one day. The greatest prospect is that it is the whosoever. The greatest plan is believeth in him. You know, that is such an easy plan, such a simple plan, that it stumps the minds of many. Old man, being the prideful creature that he is, wants to come to God some other way. If he can say, say this, this is some way, if I can have a list of here, if I can do this work, this work, this work, and this work, therefore I, I, and I deserve salvation, he would want to go that way. Some people would try to take, take their wallet out and they say, well, God, how much is it going to cost? They want to do it that way. It's not going to work. Some people say, well, I don't want to know. Uh, does God only save certain people in certain towns and certain countries? They want something where they can add something to it and say it's because of what I have, because of what I've done, because of who I am. That's the reason I'm saved. But that's not the plan. If salvation costs $500, I don't think anybody here tonight can get saved. We may probably go down a whole lot lower than that, couldn't we? If salvation were dependent on how good looking we are, then we, a lot of us would be in bad trouble. If salvation were dependent on how many good weeks, works we've done last week, some of us would be in a lot of bad trouble. If salvation were based on the fact of who our parents were, we'd be in trouble. But God puts it on an equal basis. That whosoever believeth in him. That means you can be as broke as you can be and get saved. That means you can be as rich as you can be and get saved. That means it matters no matter what you've done or what you haven't done. It's whosoever believeth in him. Amen. Not just to believe who he is. That word believeth means to trust, to depend, to rely upon. You're trusting in him. You're relying upon him. You're trusting what he done on Calvary to save your soul. You're trusting his shed blood. You trust him. Not just something you've heard about him. You trust him as a person. Whosoever believeth in him. Oh my, what a plan. Believeth in him. You say, is it that simple? Yes, it's that simple. But I'm telling you what, it's not that easy, is it? Because we have all the, all the, 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 the forces of hell trying to get go against us. We have all the philosophies of these men. We have all the theologies of the, the, of the seminaries trying to teach you something else when it's simply trusting Jesus and accepting him as your Savior and believing in him. My, what a plan. Greatest person is for God. Greatest uh, passion is so love. So our greatest presentation is uh, that he gave his only begotten son. Greatest prospect that whosoever... The greatest plan believeth in him. But oh my, the greatest promise. He said, he that believeth in him should not perish. i tell you what, did you ever, before you came to the Lord, did you ever lay in bed at night and wonder what was going to happen if you were to die before day? He said, I never thought of such a thing. I did. 
Or if you ever come close with a, an encounter with death, and you uh, come back on the other side and say, wow, that was close. Did it ever occur to you that you didn't have to come through that? And did it ever occur to you that if you weren't ready to meet God, that the, what the Bible describes as the place called hell is a reality, and without the Lord Jesus Christ, you were going there? Yes, there is a penalty. There is a penalty who are those who would reject the love of God, and God is a God of love, but those who would reject the love of God must face the wrath of God. Those who would despise the Son of God, those who would reject his sacrifice, those, who's, uh, those who in defiance would say, No, I'm not believing you. No, I'm not trusting you. I'll do it my own way. I'll do it the way I want to do it. Oh, yes, there is a punishment. He says, Those who believe on him should not perish. But if you examine that statement, you'd also know that those who would not believe on him must perish. 